Hello everyone, John here for Easy Concealed Carry. Wanted to do a quick video on how to use nail polish to fill in the etchings or the, the engraving on your firearm. Uh, about a week and a half ago, I did my MNP Compact. And prior to making the video, I wanted to test it out. I want, I've, so I've been carrying this concealed for about a week and a half now in both a Remora holster as well as a DeSantis leather holster. Uh, both inside the waistband as you can see it's held up remarkably well and so now I feel comfortable enough you know making the video for you guys uh, so you guys can see how it was done now one thing to keep in mind is you can only do the actual carvings you can't do the laser edge stuff like this here the caution warning and whatnot okay so on my shield here we're gonna fill in the Smith & Wesson on this side as well as the MNP 40 shield and the Smith & Wesson logo. Uh, first thing we're going to do is use compressed air to kind of clean out any carbon or or anything that may be in the in the uh, logo or the design. Okay, that's just any to get any gunpowder or anything out of it. Second thing we're going to do is use rubbing alcohol, preferably 91%, okay? Um, but even lower percentages will work just fine. Okay. So we're going to use cotton rounds, I guess they're called, thanks to my wife. Okay. Now bear with me here, I do have the uh, tripod to try and navigate around. And what we're going to want to do is just rub it real good. Okay. And for purposes of the video, I'm only going to do one side. So we'll do this side here with the two logos. And look at all that. There. Now I did have this gun at the firing range earlier today, so... Okay. So now the next thing we're going to do is to apply the nail polish. Now one thing that I uh, will mention here is that one that my wife told me was you do not want to shake the bottle. Okay, Shaking the bottle will cause air bubbles to build up in there and you don't want air bubbles. So while the alcohol is drying off as you can see it's evaporating uh, we're just going to gently rub this just to loosen up the, uh, the nail polish on the inside there. Okay, and then we're just going to apply a generous coating of it onto both icons. Let's make sure it's dry first. Yeah, looks like it's almost dry, so we'll give it a few more seconds here. Still see a little bit of uh, a little bit of the alcohol inside the marking, inside the logo, especially. Okay, yeah, I think we'll do the logo last to give it some more time to dry off. Okay, you just want to evenly spread it out. Now you don't want to go overboard with the nail polish because the thicker the coating, the longer it's going to take for it to dry and the harder it's going to be to remove. You want to make sure it's nice and even all the way around. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm trying to get it to focus here. And you can see how everything is covered. Now to do the logo on the other side. Okay. And now we'll let this dry, depending on uh, how much you've used and what the room temperature is like and so on, um, that's ultimately going to determine how long it takes for it to dry. It's generally about, I'd say, 30 to 45 minutes 
from what my experience was doing my MMP compact. Uh, the other item that we're going to be using, uh, which is to remove the excess nail polish afterwards, is going to be just simple basic nail polish remover. The important thing here is to use non-acetone. Okay, if you use nail polish that does have acetone in it, it can damage the finish on the firearm. So at this point, it's a waiting game. Um, so I'll see you guys in about 45 minutes. Okay, so now that it has dried, what we're going to do is take our non-acetone nail polish remover and a cotton round or cotton swath there. And, okay. and what I like to do is just gently start rubbing it, okay? Not applying hardly any pressure to it. And it's important to just, you know, take your time with it. Don't rush it. And as you start rubbing, you'll see it's starting to come off. Okay. Just gently rub and I prefer just doing like a circular motion as you can see. And then wipe off the excess. Yeah, the rest of it I can kind of clean up off camera, but... Okay. Now to do the other side. So let's get another swab. And again, we're just going to kind of gently rub it back and forth in this case. And just gently keep rubbing it until you start to see it all coming off. Now a lot of the white film you're seeing to the left there, that's just uh, from the cotton swab. Um, it'll just be easily cleaned off. See? Yeah, let's... Okay, and then what I like to do is just take a piece of just dried Oops, sorry, just tissue paper. And just gently dry it off. You don't want to rub with this because you don't want to accidentally rub off, you know, or uh, essentially you don't want to put any pressure because you don't want to rub off any of the, uh, the paint or the nail polish. And uh, there you have it. Like I said, it just needs a little bit of extra cleaning which I can do off camera. But yeah, there it is. And uh, I'll do the other side off camera. No point in extending the video any longer than it needs to be. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments, uh, and again, I don't know if I mentioned this, uh, but you can use any color. I just prefer to use white because it's, you know, it gives you the most contrast on the black finish or the melanite finish. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any questions. Give you one more kind of close up here so you can see how well it fills in. Now, I like to do two coats uh, just to help fill in, you know, anything that may have been missed or just to kind of help seal it further, uh, which I'll most likely just do off camera. But yeah, it's, it's the same process minus the... Uh, alcohol of course just reapply another thin coat of nail polish let it dry and I'm sorry uh, yeah na uh, nail polish and then use the remover to wipe it off alright guys thanks for watching